Greetings YouTube, the doctor is in, Dr. Urius Papers here, coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and & Dragons, and today we are going to review the changes that are coming to the Warlock. This came out four days ago by Riley Silverman, and so this is following the same kind of format that all the rest of these have formed, uh, been in, so... There's a, a flavor paragraph about the Warlock, a little introduction about what it is to be a Warlock, all that. Uh, there's a video, there's an advertisement for the new 2024 book bundles. There is a summary table for each one of the class features, the levels, and what it does. And then, of course, we want to get into the meat of the build Personally, I I think the Warlock needed some love a little bit. The Warlock was a little underwhelming. I know there have been a lot of people who like playing just a straight Warlock. I never did. I really haven't had hardly any players play a straight Warlock. Warlock, historically for this, for the 2014 to 2024, was a dip class. That is, you dipped into Warlock for two to four maybe five levels and that was it and then you dipped out into another class because you were dipping into it to get something out of it i am gonna guess that this picture is a fey warlock of some kind because it doesn't look like any of the other ones or would be associated with any of the other ones there's some vines and colors and things and looks maybe like a gnome or a more goofy elf, but it looks like a fey warlock to me. All right, so let's get into it. Eldritch Indo invocations now are coming at level one with the original warlock. Eldritch Indo invocations came at level two. So one of the first notable changes to the 2024 warlock is that you get access to your first Eldritch invocation at level one instead of level two. And overall, these have received a major overhaul. Now, there is a catch to these coming at level 1 instead of level 2. So we're going to talk about that. Packed boons are now Eldritch Invocations, and that is the catch. So in the 2014 Warlock, you got your Packed Boon at 13, uh, third level. I'm sorry. Third level automatically now... Your Pact Boon, such as Pact of the Blade, Pact of the Tomb, Pact of the Chain, is now a Eldritch Invocation. So the feature is gone, and these are now options you choose as Eldritch Invocations. So uh, I think you're getting more Eldritch Invocations, so that kind of wa that's a wash. It's, I think it's a, z a net zero gain. So in the 2014 Warlock, further improvements to your pack boon were accessible via invocation such as Gift of the Protector, Investment of the Chainmaster. Uh, there was a better um, Pact of the Blade. So there are two really important and beneficial aspects to this sh shift. First, you no longer have to choose between them. All three of the former pack boon options can be selected as you level up and you gain access to more. So you could be... Pact of the Blade and Pact of the Chain, if you decide, or Pact of the Tome, if you decide. So, secondly, which which I think is pretty cool, um, secondly, while some Eldritch Invocations do carry prerequisites such as Agonizing Blast, which require you to be a second level or higher Warlock, the former Pact Boon Invocations do not. This means you can select a Familiar, Book of Shadows, and a Pact Weapon as early as level 1, which is telling me that they're going to allow us to, do, to, to get three invocations at level one whereas with the old one we got two invocations i'm sorry yeah we got uh eldritch invocations we got two at level two so you can get all three of these that means we're getting three so that's that's pretty cool too um again this arrives at level one instead of level two uh so more eldritch invocations Seeing as you get an invocation, it says you get an invocation at level 1, but this one says this means you can select, oh, you can select from a familiar Book of Shadows or Pack Weapon 11. Okay, so there, it looks like we're getting one. But 
Um, seeing you get as an invocation at level one and the progression has been expedited, 2024 Warlocks will have access to more invocations than their 2014 counterpart, maxing out at 10 when they hit level 18, whereas the 18th level got eight. So we're getting two more along the way somewhere. So an old, as an old, with the older version of Warlock, whenever you gain a, a Warlock level, you can replace one invocation with another as long as it isn't a prerequisite for another invocation you have. Okay, so you got to meet the got to meet the prereqs. Some Eldritch invocations can be repeated. Popular Eldritch invocations for Warlocks like Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast are still here, but with a couple of big changes. First, they are no longer limited to Eldritch Blast. Instead, you choose one of your Warlock cantrips that deals damage, and now you can add your Charisma modifier to that roll. And I think they're talking about Agonizing Blast. So you now can boost damage for Told the Dead or Thunderclap with Agonizing Blast if it suits your Warlock build better. Um, note, however, that Repelling Blast is restricted to cantrips that deal damage via an attack roll. So that's like Eldritch Blast... But if you have, you know, uh, like Firebolt, you could put that on there too. Um, next, you can select these invocations multiple times when adding new Eldritch invocations. So you can try building a, a cantrip powerhouse. You could add Agonizing Blast or Repelling Blast to multiple cantrips. But of course, you can still use it for Eldritch Blast because, let's face it, you're a warlock. Okay, so, so I, I guess that's okay. I really liked using them on Eldritch Blast. Just because you got more than one, I wonder if they're changing that with Eldritch Blast. So with Eldritch Blast, if we highlight this, you got two beams at fifth level and three beams at eleventh level. So with a fifth level Eldritch Blast, if you had Repelling Blast, you could blast something back twenty feet, and with an eleventh level one, you could blast something back thirty feet. So can't do that with Told the Dead. Or thunderclap because those are saving throws, but with like firebolt, it just increases in damage instead of increases with the number of blasts. Okay, spell slots who needs them with exception of eldritch smite, uh, which deals a significant amount of damage and gives the enemy the prone condition. None of the 2024, 2024 player handbook eldritch invocations carry the word using a warlock spell slot description so if we look back here some of these will say you can cast compulsion using a warlock spell slot which you had very few of these slots you started with one and you got four max those were you got them back after a short rest but it was really kind of far in between for that to happen so um uh, let's see here. So they're going to take away that, and then you still have spell slots for pack magic, but they la largely no longer fuel the invocations you get from your patron. Instead, your Eldritch invocations feel like a wholly separate power branch unique to the Warlock class. So that's a bump. So if you can, if we get some of these invocations that cast spells and they don't use a slot, you just get them and say you can cast them once before a long rest. You know, particularly like um, Chains of, of Carceri, which is a hold monster, or say Dreadful Word, which is a confusion. So you cast confusion once using a Warlock spell slot, but if they took this away and just kept this, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Then you got a free confusion in addition to your packed magic. That is a big bump. That's a big giant bump in it. I feel like they're and the theme with some of the other classes is they're trying to stop level dipping and they're trying to get people to stay into a class throughout the duration of the of the actual class and level up, you know, with the class. I think this is a, a bump to that. Uh, this customization allowed via these changes to invocations makes the 2024 Warlock fear more like feel more like someone who has poured over contracts with their patron and selected the powers best suited them. Okay, you get magic cunning at level two. So all that's at level one. 
Level two, your packed magic and spell slot progression works the same way as it did. You can also still recover expended spell slots at the end of a short or long rest. Magical cunning gives you a way to recover your warlock spell slots. However, now once per long rest, you can use this feature to spend one minute on a ritual that restores half your maximum spell slots rounded up. So that means if they're keeping the spell slots the way they are, then you could, at first level, you could recover. Well, it's a second level thing, so you can't do it at first level. But at second level, you could recover one spell slot per long rest. And at 11th level, you could recover two. So that is a good thing. That I think that's a bump. The Eldritch Master feature granted at level 20 allows you to regain all your packed magic slots, but flavor-wise is now considered a more powerful version of this level 2 feature. So um, that's probably not going to happen because most campaigns don't get to that level. At level 3, we get our subclass, which is the Otherworldly Patron, which you got at first level, but now you're getting them at third level. So that's a change. Um, they bumped the first level with slots and invocations, and they're making you wait to get your your subclass. So this brings the Warlock in line with the other class options in the 2024 Player's Handbook. Okay, so they're the Archfey, the Fiend, the Great Old One, and the Celestial Patron uh, are also in here. Um, so the Archfey Patron subclass leans more into Feywild. So Misty Step is added to your prepared spell list, and many of the features of the subclass give you extra uses of the spell, along with healing bonuses and damage effects on enemies when you use it. So we'll have to see what that looks like. Beguiling Defenses has now been updated to reduce damage you take and inflict damage with a reaction. So let's see here. Uh, Archfey, Beguiling Defense. So you get Misty Escape at 6th level. Not sure if you're going to be getting that at third level. Maybe you'll get that at third level. Um, and this turns you invisible, but it's a misty step, so we'll have to see how they reworked it. Tenth level, your patron teaches you how to turn the mind-affecting magic of your enemies against them. You are immune to being charmed, and when another creature attempts to charm you, you can use your reaction to attempt to charm them back. Creature must succeed on a wisdom saying they're your spell DC or be charmed for one minute. Okay. Is this going to be the same? Uh, Beguiling Defenses has also been updated to reduce damage so it'll reduce and inflict damage with a react. Hopefully it didn't take the charm part away, but, I mean, we'll see what happens here. Celestial Patron, so grants temporary hit points when you finish your Magical Cunning ritual. So hopefully they didn't change... So that seems like it's um, in addition to all this. So that's in addition. Sounds like it's in addition to whatever was there before, which is cool. That's great. Now you're getting some temps uh, when you finish your magical cunning ritual or complete a short or long rest. So you should almost always have temps as a celestial patron. Fiend patron, I think this one is, is a buff. Dark one's blessing now grants you temporary hit points. If someone else reduces an enemy to zero hit points within 10 feet of you right now, with the fiend um at starting person when you reduce a hostile creature to zero you gain temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier plus your warlock level and i don't know how many they're going to be allowing but it sounds like as long as you're within 10 feet of somebody getting whacked uh you're getting those temps so again you'll always have temps this, it seems this seems like a uh a theme of getting temporary hit points Let's see here. Instead of once per long rest, you can use your Dark One's own luck a number of times a day equal to your Charisma modifier. Okay, Dark One's own luck. Uh, when you make an ability check or saving throw, you can use this feature to add a D10. And you can do so after seeing the initial result, but before any of the roll's effects. Okay, and that's once per short or long rest, but now you can use it a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier. And it's actually, instead of once per long rest, Dark One's own luck. Yes. Dark instead, dark One's own luck. 
Once you, you cannot use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Well, that is not correct. So I don't know if that's a typo or not because it is a short or long rest. But you could still use this a number of times a day equal to your charisma modifier, and you're going to have a pretty high charisma modifier. You can use Hurl Through Hell again by expending a packed magic slot. And I think that is a – that's a capstone ability. So it's a lot of damage. Sounds like you can do it twice essentially, or more because of your packed magic slot. So, again, hurl through hell. When you hit a creature with an attack, so you hit them with, like, an Eldritch Blast, you can use this feature to instantly transport the target through the planes. They disappear. At the end of your turn, the target returns to the space it previously occupied or nears unoccupied space. If the target is not a fiend, it takes 10d... Excuse me, 10d10 psychic damage, and it reels from its horrific experience. And again, with this one now, you can't you do this again until you finish a long rest, but it sounds like you can use a packed magic slot to do it again. That's pretty good. Um, great old one. They have changed this one quite a bit, and I like the change that they've made. Great old, great one one. There's another. The great one one patron. There's another uh, typo. They didn't really edit this very well has received the biggest change to any of the 2024 Warlock subclasses and now is much more heavy, heavily focused on the Lovecraftian. Not sure they should be using that word. That might be some IP Eldritch horror elements of it. The feature of this subclass are now heavily centered on you using your patron's power to curse enemies with hex. So maybe you're getting a free hex, break their minds with psychic damage, and even unleash aberrant horrors on the battlefield. Maybe summon things? I don't know. Because right now, the great old one, not the great one one, gives you some extra spells. And you have this awakened mind, so you can telepathically speak. You have entropic ward. So um, you learn to magically ward yourself against attack and turn enemies fail strike into good luck for yourself. When a creature makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on that roll. If it misses, your next attack roll against a creature has advantage. Thought shield and create thrall. So it doesn't really go into what they're going to replace this with, so we'll have to see. We got contact uh, patron. So as a new, a brand new feature, I like brand new features. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, for warlocks, that, that ties directly into your role as a recipient of power from a patron. Starting at level 9, every 2024 Warlock has the ability to reach out and contact their patron directly once per long rest. This feature grants you the spell Contact Other Plane. So you mentally contact them. you got to make a saving throw. Uh, as always prepared, you can use the spell once per day to contact your patron without expending a spell slot. And you automatically save. Um, so there's no... You're not going to fail. And um, on a successful save, you can attempt entity. You can ask five questions. You must ask your questions before the end. So you get some questions, and that's a freebie. Um, and that one looks like it's a freebie once per day. Mystic Arcanum functions like it did before. So you can replace one of your Arcanum spells with another one. Okay, and this choice was under the optional Eldritch versatility. So that doesn't look like it changed. And then we got our Epic Boon, which is Boon of Fate. Increase one ability score by one. When you are another creature within 60 feet of you, succeeds or fails on a D20 test, you can roll 2D4 and add or subtract from the roll. I always love these. So this is pretty nasty, although it is at 19th level, which is very high. But this is an extremely powerful ability. So once you use this feat, you can't use it again until you complete a short rest, a long rest, or roll for initiative. So basically, it's once per combat. But this is, that's pretty massive. That is an average of a minus five to a saving throw against somebody. And you could use your one of your invocations to do something nasty as your invocation feature spell like hold monster, and then go have a minus five. So, all right. Well, that is the new Warlock. I am going to give this an A because I think that they needed to do some work on the Warlock and give people an incentive to stay in the class and not, um, not level dip into the class. And that is what it is. 
So I like it, and that is the video I got for everybody, and I hope everybody enjoyed.